Hello there, this is Jennifer with Prexion. In this video, I will be covering your toolbar section, which includes some of your basic tools, such as the manipulation of your crossbars, slicing, window level, pan, and zoom. So let's start off by um, manipulating our crossbars. Um, it is very, very important that um, when analyzing a specific site, we make sure that we, our crossbars are always located at the center of that specific site. So I'm going to start off on your upper left view, which is the axial plane, and I'm going to hover over the center of the crossbars until I see the white caliber. And once I see that, I'm just going to pick up those crossbars and drag them over to a specific site here. As you can see, I can do that in any of my planes. Simply hover over the center of the crossbars until I see the white caliber and drag them over to the specific site. In this case, we are working on the left side and um, you may want to swivel over your sagittal axis and make it parallel to that side of the arch. So if I wish to do that, I'm going to pick up my anchor point that is located at the bottom of this blue line here in my axial plane. I'm going to pick up that anchor point and swivel it over and make it parallel to the left side of the arch. When I do that, you'll notice that on my sagittal view here, I can now see along the arch. It gives me a better view, okay? So, that is one way to manipulate your crossbars. Um, the second option you have available is actually a shortcut using your Alt key on your keyboard. Um, and what I like about this shortcut is that we can actually utilize our 3D image. So I'm going to just quickly reset my crossbars to their original position, okay? And I can go, go ahead and do so by um, clicking the reset icon located on the upper right corner of your screen. I'm just going to click reset here and you'll notice my crossbars move back to their original default position. Okay, so now we're going to try the shortcut using the Alt key on your keyboard. So if I want to go back to the upper left posterior site, I can go ahead and rotate my 3D image using my left click there to rotate. And now I'm going to hold down my Alt key on the keyboard. And you'll notice that my cursor has now changed into somewhat of a pointer there. And um, that's letting me know my um, shortcut is now activated. So I'm going to keep pressing my Alt key and I'm going to click with my mouse to where I wish to go. So you'll notice that once I clicked on that specific site, you'll get a blue dot in your 3D image letting you know where you are. And your crossbars here have moved now to that specific site. And it may take um, some small adjustments here to recenter. So I'm going to in my axial plane, I'm going to hover over my crossbars and just drag them over to make sure I am centered at the site that I am working on. So two ways of manipulating your crossbars there, okay? So now we're going to move on to slicing, okay? So if you look towards the upper left corner of your screen, you'll notice you have a tool bar section here. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the blue arrow um, icon is currently highlighted in blue, um, which means it is currently activated. So when your software launches, the default function it goes to is going to be the slice, okay? So to slice through each plane, I can simply hover over the plane, um, in this case, axial. I'm going to just hover anywhere here in um, 
this image and I'm going to hold down the left click of my mouse. You'll notice my cursor changes, letting me know my slice function has been activated. And I'm just going to move my mouse up and down. That's going to allow me to travel through the axial plane slice by slice. So in this case, I can go from mandible, which is considered a foot view here in axial mandible. As I move up, as I move my mouse up, I can go up towards the sinus. That same function in your corona view is actually going to move from anterior to posterior. And in your sagittal, we'll move from left to right. That is your slice function. That is the default on your left click of the mouse. If you wish to move in a slower manner, in slicing function, you can simply just roll your wheel. As you can see, I'm rolling my wheel as I hover over my axial plane, which is going to travel from foot to head, head to foot, or what may be considered mandible to sinus. My corona view, I'm going to roll the wheel on my mouse to slice in a slower manner, which is going to move from anterior to posterior of what may be considered mesial distal. And in your sagittal plane, I'll have the ability to move from left to right, okay? So two ways of slicing. One way would be to hold down your left click of the mouse and move your entire mouse up and down, or you can simply just roll the wheel of the mouse to slice in a slower manner, slice by slice. Let's go ahead and click our reset button up here on your upper right corner to bring back our crossbars to their original position. Important to note that when utilizing your reset button, if you have previously um, traced the mandibular canal or placed some implants, um, the reset button does not get rid of any of your work. It simply is resetting the crossbars to their original position. So now we're going to um, go back to our toolbar section here, and I want to show you window level, pan, and zoom functions. The window level um, is going to adjust the contrast on your CT images, and on your 3D image, it's going to um, make our image go from a bony to a tissue. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, I'm going to hover over my axial, view here and I'm going to hold down both the right and left click of the mouse together. Okay, simultaneously I want to hold them down together. You'll notice that my cursor changes to a WL letting me know my window level function is now activated as I hold down both the right and left click of my mouse. Now I'm going to move my mouse up and down and that's going to adjust the contrast on my CT images. You'll notice that um, my CT images work together, meaning if I adjust the window level in my axial plane, um, it's actually going to adjust it in all planes. So you could do this over any of your CT images. Again, hold down both the right and left click of your mouse and move your entire mouse up and down to adjust the contrast. If we um, use that same function on our 3D image, hold down both the right and left click of the mouse and move up and down, you'll notice it goes into a tissue and if I move up, it goes back to bony, okay? This function can help um, minimize some of the scatter that you may experience from metal restorations um, that our patients may already have in place. So that is the window level function. Um, 
now we're going to go ahead and skip over to Zoom. Okay, so let's go back to a specific site. And in this case, I'm going to go back to my the upper left posterior section. Okay, so currently it's a bit challenging um, to see because the image is fairly small. So if I want to further analyze the specific site, I may want to zoom in to the specific site. And in order to do so, um, we're going to utilize our mouse. And this may be a little bit complex in the beginning, so it may take some practice on your end. But what we want to do is hold down the wheel of the mouse. So press down the wheel. You'll notice my cursor changes, letting me know my zoom function has been activated. And what I want to do here is move my entire mouse up. So as I press down the wheel of the mouse, make sure not to roll it, press down the wheel of the mouse, move your entire mouse up, and that is going to zoom in. If I wish to zoom out, I can press down the wheel of the mouse and move down. But I actually want to zoom in in this case. So again, we're going to try that same function in here in our lower left view, which is considered our coronal. I'm going to press down the wheel of the mouse and move my entire mouse up. Now in our sagittal, press down the wheel of the mouse and move up. Okay. So you can see here, we now have a better view of that specific site. Um, the other option to enlarge um, a, sp a specific view to get a better look at it, you can also double click to any of your views and it enlarges it, okay? To go back to your four views, you're going to double click again. And you can do that, as you can see here, I'm going to double click to go back, okay? So that is an alternative um, for your Zoom function. Now, let's say I wanted to analyze the anterior area here in my axial view. Currently, we've zoomed in so much that it's the anterior area is now out of that field of view box, okay? So if I want to analyze that anterior area, I want to pan my image to recenter it, okay? So what I can do is just hold down the right click of the mouse. There you go. It, now your cursor has changed, letting you know your pan function has been activated. Holding down the right click of the mouse, I'm going to bring my mouse down, move my mouse, and reposition that image. Okay, so again, if you wish to reposition or pan the image, hold down the right click of the mouse and move as you desire. I'm bringing it back to this upper left posterior site. So, that is going to be panning of the image. Um, now, most of us will be working from a desktop with a mouse available. But if you are working from a laptop without a mouse, um, those shortcuts will not be available because you do not have a mouse available. But what you can do is I'm going to select reset here on my upper right area. Okay. And instead of using a mouse, you can actually select any of these functions. You can select any of these icons to make that specific function your default on what would be considered the left click of the mouse. So for example, again, you'll notice here that currently it defaults to the slice function. So if I'm utilizing the mouse pad on my laptop, I can hold down what is considered the left click and just move my mouse pad here up and down. Again, it defaults to the slice function, but if I wish to adjust the window level, I can select window level icon here instead and now hold down the left click of the mouse pad and move the mouse pad and that's going to allow us to adjust contrast. So if you are 
working from a laptop without a um, mouse available to you, you can, um, instead of those shortcuts, you can utilize your mouse pad here by selecting the icon that you desire to use. Okay, I'm gonna click reset here again. And that is basically um, an overview of your toolbar section. Thank you so much for watching.